Hello, welcome back. Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modeling Bench. And here we have now part 12 of this beautiful build of this 132nd scale Lancaster bomber in the Dambuster guys. Um, really, really lovely model. I mean, just look at this, how it's all coming together. Look at the detail in that cockpit. It's stunning. And um, it's really, really nice. It's got its accuracy issues, uh, but we're going to be covering that in another video, um, which will be separate from these videos. It won't be part of this series. So keep your eyes peeled for that one. We'll be making some small changes to the seat belts. We'll be changing the colours only slightly and moving these radios around and stuff just to make it more accurate for a Dambuster Lancaster. But uh, yeah, it looks very, very nice. So here we are now with pack 12. If you want to join in the fun and you want to build one of these yourself, um, you can, I'll put a screen up now, you can scan the QR code, you can uh, look at the email address, of the email address, the website address across the bottom, and you can join in and subscribe. So there's also down in the comments below this video in the, in the um, description, not the comments, there's a link to a YouTube video that you can go and see the finished development model, not the finished model, the developer model. Uh, you can see it and they dig through all the working parts and everything. So without further ado, let's get this one out. We'll have a look as we normally do. We'll have a look at the magazine. We'll put our box of parts to one side. So this is uh, number 12 now already. And it's coming together quite quickly actually. So here we have, as normal, the magazine. We've got the description of what's going on. We've got all our customer contacts here. And here we have the contents of the kit. We've now got some screws. So we're going to start putting together, together stuff properly now. So um, basically, there we go. Right. So here we go. Right. We are talking now about the Dam Busters for the first time, I think this is. Um, in 1955, the Danfusters film is released. It tells the gripping story of the development of the bank scene bomb and used by 617 Squadron. Yeah, it's um, it's a very, very good film, but there's a lot of fiction in it um, because at the time the film was made, the bank scene bomb was still secret. So the aircraft you see in that film, bear in mind, they're not genuine Danbuster lengths. The bomb is almost spherical. Um, all of the mechanism that holds the bomb is not accurate. So, yeah, just bear that in mind. It was a film. They did have the guys that originally built the Dambuster Lanx, the 464s. They had them there, or the designers or whatever. Uh, they had them there on, on the set with them. So a lot of the stuff they talk about is accurate, but the way it's portrayed on screen is not. Um, so when released, the Dambusters became the biggest, biggest British box office success of 1955. Yet it appeal, its appeal survived well beyond its opening year. Um, from the Star Wars movies to ads for Carling Beer, the Dam Buster influenced a whole new generation of filmmakers and came to symbolise the British stiff upper lip in the face of adversity. So there we are. And then we've got the Armstrong Whitworth Whitley. Now I believe, please tell me if I'm wrong, I believe Airfix are about to re-release one of these. Uh, so this was a lovely old aircraft. Um, in total, 1,824 were built. First flew in 1936. So you can see here that it's got the doubled up windows. So they went from double windows to single windows to no windows. It's a very pretty aircraft, isn't it? And there'll be lots of information about it in here. Two Rolls-Royce Merlin 10 liquid-cooled V12 engines. There we go. And on the back of here, you can see we've got coming in issue 13. So we've got a, a floor section with screws. So that's going to be a quick one. Right, so let's get into this one. We'll get the light on. Get the magazine over there out of the way so it doesn't upset our white balance too much. And we can have a look at what parts we've got. So let's have a look. It's hard to know when you when you get these how much we're going to go into the next, you know, using the last part. So I've got the cockpit there from step 12 or from pack 12. So we've got some different screws here. We've got CP and DP, so they, they're plastic screws. Um, we've got some parts here. So this is going to be the main wing spar. Um, and the navigator seat, so we'll get that out of there, put the bags to one side. Here we've got the back of the main wing spar, bearing in mind all the crew up front, so that's the bomb aimer, the front gunner in the case of Dambusters, they were the same person in most Lancasters. Um, oh, we've got DP screws as well, so we've got DP and we've got AM, so we've got some metal screws, so we're going to be doing some thread tapping. So, right, we have um, wireless operator seat and back panel. That's there. 
we have the um, 11, 12E is the rear panel, so that's going to go on the back of there. We have a hydraulic tank. We have a valve, 12G, it's a valve, hydraulic reservoir base section. Uh, we've got some seat bases and backs for the navigator. We've got a, what's 12F? That's a side, the little side cushion, the armrest for the uh, for the wireless operator. And then 12H is a railing. I'm assuming that's going to be for the camera. It didn't have a camera on this one. They had a light, but they still had the railing there to prevent the bomb aimer's feet kicking the light. So um, you will also need screws and unused parts from several previous issues. That's going to be fun. <laughs> Digging back through. I'll just show you. This is my box of bits from previous issues. You can see there's lots of it. So um, wish me luck with that one. Right. So here we go. So we've got uh, four 1.7 by, by four sp screws, two four millimeter screws and two by four millimeter screws. So they're the KM screws. So they're going to be two millimeter thread, are they? Okay, so we're going to have to do some tapping. Right, so we're going to start with the build. Start here on page four. And what it's asking us to do is take the rear spar and we're going to take the base of the seat. We've got a big hole and a small hole and a big pin and a small pin. And we're just going to place those in like that. If I can find the hole. Who misses? Here we go. I'm, I'm not going to put that all the way in because I want to take it out to paint it. Um, and that one there is going to go. And if you wonder why I want to paint it, it's because this green is... Most people will be more than happy with this green. I personally think it's too dark. This is more of a, a grey green, whereas the interior was a, a cockpit green, interior green. It was much lighter. So um, I'm going to be changing mine. You don't have to. The kit is absolutely fine as it is. And then this rear panel is going to go onto here. So taking the rear panel, fit the back of the push the parts together firmly to ensure the parts are fitted to correctly. So I don't need to take this apart again, so we can put that together like so. And there we go, you can hear it all going together and you'll see the gaps close up. There we are, that's together nice and solid. Okay, there's a bit of a gap at the top there, but I'm not going to worry about that. Yeah, it's not going to go together anymore, but that's absolutely fine. Okay, um, and then we're going to take this uh, hydraulic reservoir and the base section and that is going to go into there. So we've got a pin on there that's going to go into that hole. So just push that in. Okay, that's gone in there. And then this is going to go onto here. So that is going to push that square peg there is going to push into that gap there. So you will have to glue that to make it stay there. I'm not going to glue it right now because I want to take it apart. But you're going to have to glue that. Okay, so there's that assembly finished. And now it's asking us to add this to our cockpit floor. We've got two slots in the floor there. We've got two big tabs on here. Well, I'm not sure if this is going to actually want to go together. Oh, yeah, it does. Okay, so that's going to go in there like that. And now you can see, oh, we've got our armrest as well. Where's the... We missed that out. It was in the first step. We've got the navigator's armrest here. So we've got a big pin, small hole, big pin, small pin, big pin, small pin, big hole, small hole, sorry. So that's going to go into there. I think what we'll do is use some tweezers for this. So that's going to go into there like so. on let's remove this from here it's a very tight fit so tight it doesn't want to go in at all I don't think there we go it's gone in there we are right so that's all our seat and everything in and properly so we can put this in here just like so, okay. And this hydraulic cylinder here, to be quite honest with you, I would probably not fit this now um, because it's probably gonna get broken off, but it's gonna have to be glued in. Um, that pin, 
that should go right in and then that's going to sit on top of there but I would imagine that's going to be quite easily knocked off and broken unless we're going to cover it up see this is going to be exposed so you might want to leave that out um, check all parts are securely fixed before proceeding you will need to turn the assembly over in this issue okay okay we're doing we're using quite a lot right so take the starboard cockpit framing assembly from issue 8 Check how the framing 07A fits against the starboard side of the cockpit. Fix in place with four AM screws as indicated. So I'm going to get myself sorted out with the tap wrench in a minute. It won't be a second. All right, so when you see these metal screws, I can show you the difference. You can see here, okay, this is a CP screw. So what it is, if the, if the suffix, if the last letter is P, it means it's a plastic screw for plastic. And if it's an M, it's a metal screw for metal. I'm going to show you the difference. So you can look at these together. You can see that this one here on the right, the one that's just moved to the top, the one on the right has a much coarser thread than the one on the left. Now the one on the left is what's called a machine screw. That's got a, it's got a thread. And this one here is like a self tapper. So it cuts its own thread into the plastic. Now, many people who build these models, they will tell you just to dip the screw in oil and screw it in. That's absolutely fine until one day when the screw head snaps off because the hole's too tight. I'm X Rolls Royce time served. I can't do that. I need to cut a thread. And to cut a thread, you use taps. So you have taps and you have dies. Dies are for cutting a thread on a shaft, so an external thread. Taps are for cutting a thread in a hole. So that would eventually, if you like, that would make a nut, that would make a bolt. So this is just a cheap set of taps and dies. If you look out micro taps and dies on Amazon, you'll find them. You don't have to get this set. There's lots of different ones. You don't need the best ones on the market. It's not hard metal we're tapping. It just needs to be a set of taps. OK. Um, and they're probably all from the same place these days anyway. So I've measured these screws up. And also when you look in the parts list, it tells you KM is a metal screw and it tells you here five two by four. So it's telling you it's an M2 thread, a two millimeter thread, or you can measure them and you can measure that it is two millimeters. So I'm going to grab a two millimeter tap and in the here you have two different types of tap and you have this is actually the starter tap. OK, so this one, as you can see, the threads don't go all the way to the end. And then this one is a bottoming tap where the threads do go right to the end. So we're going to use the bottoming tap. You can use these bits and use that as a tap wrench. I find that much too aggressive. I've just got a uh, simple pin vise here. OK, I'm going to put that tap in there. Do that up. Don't do it up too tightly. Um, and then what will happen is the tap will spin when it bottoms out. So what we can do now is with this base, we can see that we're going to be putting screws. If we take this side panel, we are going to be putting screws into, let's see how this is going to fit on here. You can see that it's going to fit like that. Okay, he says. Something's stopping it going on. Oh, it's the base of the, you need to hook the base of the, um, the seat here. I'm pointing out my little finger. That needs to be hooked over so I'm going to just hook that over there we go so now we can see that we've got one two three four holes that we're going to be threading into so we can remove this okay and using our tap we've got a hole there so we're just going to cut a hole I'm just going to look to see if they're they are actually through holes okay so I'm just going to Screw this in here. Now, if you were tapping hard metal, OK, you would go one turn, back a half, one turn, back a half like that. But this is just soft metal, so you don't need to worry about it too much. OK, so we can do that. And you can see now, when we look at this, you can see that in there, I keep knocking that thing off. As I said, it's going to be easy to knock off. You can see in here we have a thread cut now, a nice thread, rather than just grunting a screw into a hole. OK, and we can see here that we have clearance behind so we can actually go all the way through. So I'm going to go into here. 
And the reason you turn back is when you actually cut a thread, it's almost like if you can imagine getting a pin and scraping it around something, that's what it's doing. It's cutting a thread. And the reason you turn it back is it breaks it off. So when you get like a curl of swarf coming up, you turn back, it breaks it off. So you go one turn forward, half a turn back, one turn forward, half a turn back, just like that. OK. You can see the metal being cut out here. So rather than just grunching screws in, we're actually doing it professionally. And as I say, there is always a risk when you start grunching those screws in, there is always a risk that you could um, snap the head of the screw off. So uh, be careful with that. It happens a lot with the pocket kits, apparently, I'm led to believe. So there we are, just cut those threads in there. There we go. Blow it out to get any swarf out and you can see all the mess on here. So what we can do is just sweep that up with our hand. Get all those bits of metal off your bench. Okay, we've got a little bin here, just sweep that into the bin. There we go. Or you can use a little, this is called a Tihu. This is a little desktop vacuum. And you can go over and vacuum your bench with this brilliant little tool, absolutely awesome. Again, get these on Amazon. I don't have an Amazon shop. I don't want to make any money out of you guys. Um, but yeah, Tihu, there is a cheaper version on there. It's about six pounds, I think. This is about 10 pounds. Don't get the cheap, cheapo one. I got one, it didn't work. And when you look at the design, it, it, it was never going to work because the battery connectors were the complete wrong shape for the batteries. So they've probably corrected it by now. Anyway, so right, let's fit this on the side here. So we're going to hook that that flight engineer seat over and then that's going to go on like that so i've got a magnetic screwdriver this is not the one that hashet give you the one that hashet gives you is absolutely fine but i would suggest getting a magnet magnetic one because it makes life a lot easier so that's going to come down over there like that and then we can put this screw in and as you can see i can very easily screw that in there and i can feel what's going on when you start grunching them in and, they're too, and you're, you're trying to wind them in tight, I find, you know, my experience, I find you can't feel what's going on. Whereas doing it this way, you can feel it. So I'm going to put the one in the front first, just like so. Now, if you can see everything all flopping about, it's because I'm going to be having to take this apart again to make my, my uh, modifications video. So that's the only reason. There's nothing wrong with the model. You will see me come back with this all painted a different colour and it will all be firmly fixed and glued together properly. So there we go. So that's gone in there. And you're just tightening the screws to stop. We don't want to grunch them up. We'll start splitting the plastic open if we do that. OK, so there we go. So that's that all gone together. So we're starting to see now. You know, this thing is bloody gorgeous, isn't it? It really is lovely. I cannot believe this is a part work. It's, it's, I've never done a part work before. I'm doing the um, 1.6 scale Mustang at the moment, but I've never done, before that, I've never done one. And I must be honest, I can't believe how nice this is. So that's step seven done. So now we're coming over the page and it's going to ask us to start putting all the nose parts in as well. So we have here... So, yes, luckily I have the nose here. So that one is all glued together. Um, so it's take take the framing assembly from issue two. Check how the framing sits against the forward end of the framing 07A fix in place with three CP screws as indicated. And these are the CP screws. These are plastic. So there's no thread tapping required now. So we're going to place that over there. So you can see we've got a large raised bulge there. And we've got a pin there. So that is all just going to clip into there really easily. And then we're going to take my squeaky chair. We're going to take one of these screws here and we'll put that one in the middle. So just wind that. Whoops, I've just broken off the pilot seating because it's not fitted properly. I've just broken off that reservoir again. It's not breaking, it's just coming apart. Nothing's being broken. It's just not been put together properly at the moment. 
I think I need to get my uh, bottom in gear and make the uh, revisions video so I can put all this together properly. Right, so that's that framing in there. And now it's asking us to take the LED and cable 04P. Note that the arm on the left in this diagram circled left is longer than the other. Thread the connector on the cable through the hole in the floor assembly circled below. So we're going to get the light, which is... All right, so something weird going on here, guys. I'll show you in a minute. So um, basically, we have the LED from one of our earlier option books. I think it was three or four. Uh, we got that. I think it was actually four. Uh, we've got this the SLED light so you can see that it's showing on here it's saying that one leg is taller than the other you can see there that leg is clearly taller than that one right that leg is clearly taller than that one so that one note the arm on the left in this diagram circled left is longer than the other thread the connector on the cable through the hole in the floor assembly fit the part into the opening so that the pegs on the arms fit into recesses in the floor so I've straightened the cable out all right to the best of my ability um, so this is actually going to go through this hole here into the bomb bay all right so that's going to go through there all right so we can just pass that through and just keep pushing it through and then this light is going to fit into here with the longer arm facing forward okay so it's going to go from the top down and it's going to have the longer arm facing forward all right and it's going to go there's two little grooves in there you can see the light just about because it's all dark but there's two little grooves in there that it goes into i'm going to pull that cable through because the cable is pulling the light out because the cable's quite rigid if you live in a very warm climate you won't have this problem okay so that's going to go down there and it doesn't really want to stay there because of the cable but what we're going to do now is we're going to fit this this guard over the top and this is basically going to go fits into the top of the part 4p square pegs in the base of the railing fit in the holes of the floor the inset shows the railing 12h um, and the light in place note the angle of the light the panels at the base the base of the railing help to hold the light in place when you're happy with the fit glue the parts 04p and 12h in place so they're asking you to glue the light all right and this piece here, this frame, they're asking you to glue it in place. Now, clearly, I'm not going to do that. Um, and that pin is going to go, wow, this is awkward. So, I'm going to use tweezers so it's not just a video of fingers you're watching. Um, I'm going to, that light can stay out of the way for now. We worry about that when we get to it. But I'm going to pick up this. All right, so this is going to go, that's going to go underneath there. And this is going to go, come on. I'm trying to hold it so you can see what I'm doing. This is going to go behind that bracket for the bomb computer. And it's, oh, come on. The build sequence is what's made this awkward. It's not the actual design of the model, it's the sequence. What we should have done really is done this before we fitted the cockpit floor. But basically that is going into there. And the other side is going into there. Oh, come on. So that is going to push down into there. And that back one's going to push down into it as well. And then what we're going to do is that light is going to go in there. Wow. And this is going to go down into the... Oh, dear. I hope you get the idea because I'm going to have to do this off camera because I can't hold it so you can see what I'm doing and physically do it. It makes it much harder for me trying to hold it so you can see. But really, if you can, I would take this cockpit floor out. And if you haven't built your model yet, I would fit this before you fit this extension to the floor because as you can see, I've got another floor here somewhere. As you can see, before that goes in, this will be a lot easier to put in now before that floor goes in because it just drops in and you'll push it down. Whereas now we've got everything in the way. It would even be easier before you put this side panel on, to be honest. Um, so yeah, the build sequence 
could have been better but obviously it depends on the parts that are available to go into the sets at the time. I'm going to put this in off camera and then show you how it looks when it's done. Okay so there you go. Now clearly I can't glue this because I need to do my conversion, my modifications, but what I need to do is get that done before I do any more because on this front because I I can't keep doing this to you guys I have to build it properly and obviously I can't glue it together normally what I would do here is hold this in place put some super glue through on the back of those pins and it would stay there lovely now personally it's telling you to glue when you're happy with the fit glue the parts 04p which is the light and 12h in place I would glue 12h which is this frame but I'd be tempted to not glue the light because once it's on the base, you, the lights are going to come down onto the base apparently and make a beam. Now, I make the figure of eight, sorry. If you glue this in place now, it's going to be non-adjustable. Whereas if you leave it unglued, it will be movable. Um, like so. So you, 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 I don't know, I don't know how you're going to glue it in place once the model's built. But I would really not want to do it now. So, right, this is the funny bit now. We're going on here to take the port side cockpit framing from issue four. You will also need four, four AM screws supplied with that issue. You get the screws with this issue. So you don't need those screws, but you do have those screws from a previous issue. I mean, there's, there's lots and lots and lots of spare screws you can see here. So, you know, you've got no worries on that. Uh, so we're gonna get the cockpit side from issue four, wherever it may be. Um, Mr. Unprepared again. I've, I've tapped the holes, but didn't. I forgot to get the cockpit side out. So let me go and find it and then we'll come back. Okay, found it. So there it is. I thought I'd lost it for a minute. Um, as soon as I put it down, all this is falling apart again because obviously it's not glued together. So I'm going to take this out, okay? And what I'm gonna do is have to do a modifications video before I do any more with this cockpit. So, uh, there we are. So I'm taking that out. So if you see me do another one where I put the front on, it's not in there. Don't worry about it. It's because I can't glue it in yet. So um, the wireless operator, oh, here we go. So here, here's where I'm missing a step. So we're going to fit this over. As you can see, I've already tapped those threads in here. Okay. I'm going to fit this in place because it's going to be protected now. So this is going to go on to here like that. Okay. And close the top up like so. so we've got a pin going into there right and then we're going to get four of our AM screws or KM screws whatever they want to call them They're AM and KM and then we can put one into there we can just screw that in as if it was going into a nut because we've got a lovely thread and we're not launching anything in If you do a lot of these part works that you've never bothered before with cutting threads, um, give it a go. You'll uh, you'll be converted. And if you build those posture kits, poker kits, whatever you pronounce it, again, you'll be converted rather than having to launch things in. And like I say, when it gets to the bottom of the thread or the end of the, the screw, you know you can actually feel what's going on. You can feel the screw pulling on the plastic. You can feel how tight it goes. When it's when you're actually grunching them in, you can't feel anything. So that's going like that, and then we've got a screw here which is DP. So that's DP. Can I have one out, please? It would be nice if you'd let me have one out of the bag, please. There we go. Thank you. And then this is going to go into there. That's a plastic screw, so no thread cut required. We just clip that together. There's no positive location there. And there we are. So that is step is it pack 12, this one? Pack 12, yeah, that's pack 12 completed. Never mind the fact I got two of them. So what we're going to do here, we've got <clears throat> a DP screw there, which will go back in its bag. And here we have some CP screws which no doubt are going to be called upon in another operation. So bear that in mind. 
Uh, so put them back in their CP bag. I've got my little curry sauce takeaway pot here, which is dead handy for things like this. Um, the little bags are good to keep as well. But uh, there we go. So that has been pack 12, all done, other than the light. Um, I always do my photograph at the end for the uh, for the video title, but it's not going to have that light in it because I can't, I can't face putting that in again. It's an absolute nightmare. As I say, if you haven't built this yet, if you're getting all the packs and then you're going to build it at a later date, put that light in before you fit that floor. OK, so what you could do is when you when we went back to step 11 or pack 11 is when we fitted this cockpit pedestal. What you could do is leave that off and then as you're ready to fit that cockpit pedestal, put your light in, fit the um, fit the protection. This is actually a protection frame that goes around the camera. It's what the camera sits in. Um, put it in then. Don't um, don't leave it till now. It's very, very awkward to put in there. And there we go. And there's our hydraulic cylinder falling off again. So what I'm going to do here, I am going to put these parts in a bag. OK, so I know where these are from. So I'm going to put that in there and I put that in there and I'm going to put this LED light and its cable in that bag as well. Um, and then that's safe for when we put it together properly. All right. So as I say, I'm going to have to do my conversions video um, because it's not fair having you guys watch me put this together uh, and just um, have it fall apart all the time. But there we go. That's how it's going to look. Isn't that just the bee's knees? It's gorgeous, isn't it? It really is gorgeous. There's everything in there that you've got in the border model Lancaster. Um, and there's more in there than you get in the Hong Kong models Lancaster. So, you know, and you haven't got to paint any that you want. I am, but you don't have to. And as I say, we're going to be doing some corrections. That's a H2S display there. That's a G display in there. That that has to go. We don't have that in a Dan Buster. And that box in there on the shelf is going to go onto there. So I'll show you how I'm going to do that later. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all soon. Bye for now.